Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, or really helps out the channel. So thank you so much. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, this was a suggestion over on r slash Mark Narrations from Tired as Hell Already, who said, this one is a favorite of mine. And then link the post from Still Angry After Four, who says, It's been four years, and I thought I was past it, but after this Memorial Day, I'm not, and I need advice. I've been stalking these subreddits for a while, and I thought just reading people's stories would help me, or if I found someone with a similar situation, I could see how they did it. But I guess my situation is unique, so here we go. First, let me be clear. I don't care if you think this is fake. I don't care if you want to rip me a new one after I vent. It already happened. I thought I was okay. I thought I moved on. But after last weekend, it all came back. And the anger I had back then just came in full force. And even though I'm back home with my fiance, that anger towards my ex just won't go away. I spent years in anger management for what she did and the situation that was created. And I thought I was okay. Right now, I just turned 39. I was 18 when I met my ex, Marisol. During that time, I was a gangbanger with the Latin Kings. I was in a member since I was 13 and was always in and out of trouble. Marisol was a church girl. My grandmother dragged me to Sunday Mass and when I saw her, to me, it was love at first sight. I asked my cousin, who was a friend of hers, if he could introduce us, but he refused. He didn't want me to mess with her. He didn't want me to ruin her. Have you ever met someone that you wanted to make yourself better to be with? Wanted to be that man who would walk the right path? That was her. When I found out that she was going to church almost every day, I hung out by the steps, talking to her. I always walked her to and from church. She made me feel like I wasn't worthless. One thing led to another and we were dating and I felt great. For a year and a half after I pushed myself away from the gang life, got my GED, became a regular churchgoer and was thinking about the future when I got unintentionally pulled back in. I was at a store and ran into someone that I used to have problems with. They were running their mouths and I tried to ignore it. I swear I did. I just then let them talk and I walked away. But then I got stabbed in the shoulder blade and I lost my mind. I beat the shit out of him. I got arrested and suddenly it was like the shit I did to make my life better vanished. Marisol was pissed at me. My grandmother kept bringing up my past mistakes and my cousin was telling me that he knew that I wasn't going to change. My public defender saw me trying to better myself and by the grace of God got me off after a month in lockup. Despite being angry with me, Marisol did visit me almost daily. A month after I got out, I found out I was going to be a father and I didn't want my kid to have a dad that was dead or in jail. We eloped. I went to a trade school to become a mechanic and I busted my ass for my future family. When Luna was born, it was almost the worst day of my life. Marisol wouldn't stop bleeding. She went into shock and they had to give her a double hysterectomy. She was in the hospital for months and Luna became my world. I wanted her life to be the best. I wanted to give her the world. When Marisol was released, I promised her that our daughter will have a life far better than ours and for years I kept that promise. I saved enough money to move us to the suburbs, became homeowners. I was Girl Scout leader if you could believe that. I made sure Luna went to private school, made sure she knew how to defend herself and always made sure I was the perfect husband. I didn't know my parents, didn't have a positive male role model in my life, so I didn't know what a healthy relationship looked like. That's a lie. TV dads were my male role models and I mimicked them and the marriage they had on TV. As the years went by, I owned my own garage. My cousin became a pastor. My grandmother was still a pain in my ass. My relationship with my wife was stronger than ever. I made sure I kept my prison body, but Luna, Luna hated me. Since she turned 13, she just started hating me. She didn't want me to hug her, rolled her eyes every time I told her I loved her, ignored me when I asked her about her day in school. It hurt me and Marisol saw it. She told me that she's a teenager and that I should just let it ride. She will come back to me. For two years, it was like that. So for her, Kinsey and Nera, I wanted to go all out. Got everything she wanted and she was still disrespectful and briefly the old me almost came out. 
just to put her in her place, but instead, I went to my cousin, vented my frustration and doubts about being a good father. He just told me to let her be, and he said a prayer for me. I wanted a slideshow for the father-daughter dance. I got a chunk of the pictures of us together, but I realized I didn't have any recent pictures of us. She didn't want to take any. The last time I had pictures of her, I was smiling with me, was on her 13th birthday, and those were on my daughter's broken tablet. I took that tablet, went to the repair shop, and I didn't care the cost. I needed that tablet fixed. After a day and $300, the tech fixed it and I was happy. I knew her passcode, but I never bothered invading her privacy. I just wanted those pictures, and when I opened that tablet and looked in the gallery, there they were. My little girl, smiling and happy to be with me. I felt great, and the instant messages appeared. It was my daughter talking to my wife. It was a long banter that she didn't want me to dance with her, and it did hurt. But like my wife said, she's being a teenager. Then she said something that destroyed me. She texts why she had to do the father-daughter dance with me since I'm not her father. I felt my heart stop. I got dizzy, my mouth dried up, and I needed to sit down. My wife responded that I raised her, I loved her, and that makes me her father. But Luna responded by saying that my cousin is her father and she can't wait for her to turn 18 so she could tell me the truth and she could live with her real dad. That she hated me. That she thanked God I'm not her father. Marisol began cussing her out, saying that it was a mistake for my cousin to tell her the truth two years ago and the more they talked, the angrier I was getting. My wife lied to me for 15 years. My cousin, whom I confide my issues about Luna and my fears about being a bad father, not only fucked my wife, but had me raise his child. I wanted to hurt them. I felt a mixture of anger, sorrow, grief. I wanted to scream, cry, and die at the same time, if that makes any sense. I went to a dark place, and so I wouldn't do anything stupid. I told Marisol that I needed to focus on work so I could pay the quince, and instead I drove to Manhattan and saw my old public defender, who wasn't a low-level attorney anymore. He had a nice expensive firm near Midtown East. I was surprised that he remembered me, but apparently I was his first case as a public defender. We sat down and I told him everything. I gave him the tablet and when he turned it on, the messages just kept coming. Only this time, Luna was talking to my cousin, a real father, and he was telling her to give me a chance. How I was always there for her. But Luna told him that so was he. Now it makes sense that they have so much in common and even called him Pappy multiple times in their conversation. And he responded and told her that she was his little girl. We went through our options and he asked me what I want to do. And I told him that I wanted to go full scorched earth. I wanted to poison the well and he asked me several times if that is what I wanted and nodded. I also told him that everything had to be filed before the quince in two weeks. So we sat down and spent the next 12 hours on what needed to be done. And I followed his instructions to the letter. I secretly placed my business for sale called the private school and told them that I will not be paying for next year. Closed the college accounts and the savings that I had for Luna and prepared to place my house for sale online. No one was the wiser. I followed his instructions perfectly. There was only one thing I deviated from. The day of the quince. That day went off without a hitch. The whole family was there. Luna was smiling, having fun. Marisol kept asking me if I was okay and I lied to her. I was hard lying to her. From the moment I met her, I never lied to her and during those two weeks, every time I kissed her, held her, made love to her, it was hard not to scream at her. It was hard not to hate her. She knowingly let me raise another man's child. She slept with my cousin, the man who I saw as my brother, the godfather of my child, the best man when I eloped, my confidant. So the rage was hard to suppress to say the least. When it was time for the father-daughter dance, I called her to the center stage. She looked annoyed but walked over. had music playing and she smiled and it tore me apart. Seeing her smiling at me. For years, I wanted to see that smile again and now I didn't want it. As we danced, I had the slideshow playing. Pictures of the two of us. And towards the end of the song, screenshots of her text messages with her mother and real father. Needless to say, this didn't bode too well. Marisol looked like she saw a ghost. Luna just kept staring at the large screen and my cousin just stared at me with fear. Marisol ran to me and told me that she could explain and I told her that I filed for a divorce, that she could explain it in court. She grabbed my arm begging and I pulled back. 
I told Luna that I busted my ass to give the world and now she doesn't deserve it. I began to walk out, but not before telling my cousin that every time I see him, I'm going to knock him out. Then I knocked him out. The aftermath was harsh. Marisol and Luna was at my grandmother's apartment. Her family was shocked and disgusted with her. They wanted nothing to do with her. Her father actually apologized to me. I don't know why. He never liked me despite turning my life around. That man hated me. But now I was the perfect husband and father. But just a few days prior, I was the former piece of shit. My grandmother had the audacity to tell me about the story Abraham and how when he came back from battle three years later, his wife had one child and he raised him as his own and how I should just be like Abraham. So I told her to get the fuck out of my house. Marisol came a few days later, crying as soon as she saw me, telling me that it was an accident. That when I was arrested, she was so angry at me and my cousin was there to console her and one thing led to another and they had sex. It happened only one time and she was faithful to me ever since. She was willing to take a lie detector test to prove it. So I asked her how long she knew Luna wasn't mine and she started crying more. That look she gave me just told me she knew from day one and asked her to leave. She wanted to go to counseling, telling me that I'm overreacting and we can make it work. It was in the past and that I needed to get over it and I'm Luna's father, despite what happened and I allowed my temper to get the best of me. I must have repeated get over it over a dozen times at full volume while grabbing her shit and tossing it out the door. I called her a lying whore. I told her that I didn't want to see her fucking face ever again and that I told her this life that I built no longer belongs to her before shoving her out the door. A couple of weeks went by and she kept blowing up my phone. Not once Luna tried to reach out to me. Marisol was shocked to learn that I sold my business, even more so when she learned that I had an open house. She came in screaming, telling the viewers to get out of her house and pleading with me to seek help, that I was ruining our marriage, that I had no right to sell our home, the home where we raised our child in. And I told her that this house is full of lies. It's a house where I raised another man's child and when I sell it, I will give her half and order her to get out before I call the cops. It was a bluff. All she had to do was play the victim and I would have been arrested, but she didn't. She complied. Shortly after this, my cousin came to talk to me and I knocked him out, dragged him outside and closed the door. I refused mediation. Marisol wanted to reconcile, but I didn't. I wanted a divorce and my attorney filed for a fast track divorce and in three months, we were in Nassau County Courthouse. I barely spoke to anyone during that time. I read horror stories about the court system, especially during divorce proceedings, but I didn't have that. I had a female judge who was very fair. My attorney took care of everything. First, Marisol's lawyer tried to talk about my past when I was in a gang, as if my past barred a reason for me to be a terrible husband and father. But my attorney quickly smacked that down and the judge reprimanded her attorney for trying to shame someone who turned their life around. My attorney presented all the evidence and offered a lump sum alimony payment with the pending sales of the house and business. At first, Marisol kept asking me to reconsider, but I ignored her. And when she finally realized that I'm not budging, she agreed. Yet the real surprise happened when it came to child support. My attorney presented all of the text messages from Luna's conversation with Marisol, showing that not only Luna knew I am not her father, but she cannot wait to be with her real father, saying that she no longer has to live a lie. Marisol was completely caught by surprise from this. Then my attorney filed a motion to have my name removed from Luna's birth certificate, have my last name removed, as well as not being responsible for any child support since all parties agree that my cousin was her father. Marisol was shocked by this. She yelled at me, begged me not to do this to Luna, that I am her father because I raised her and as pathetic as I sound right now, but if Luna didn't act that way towards me, if she didn't say those things, I would have agreed. There were moments that I wanted to reach out and try to make it work. But then I would look at Luna's continuing text messages to her friends, her real father and mother, and I refocus on my resolve. Till this day, I don't know what hurts the most, being lied to by a woman who you thought was the love of your life, or having a child who you tried to make their lives better, to give them the world, just toss you aside like trash. The judge was quiet for a long while while reading page after page after page of text messages. In the end, she agreed. I was not financially responsible for Luna, and my name could be removed. My attorney also filed a motion for the courts to go after my cousin to pay for child support and a motion to sue my cousin in civil court for all the money I've spent raising Luna. 
the private schools, dance classes, Girl Scouts, horseback lessons, everything I ever spent on that child. And after my attorney explained to the judge that my cousin committed fraud for knowingly allowing me to raise his daughter and not offer any financial support or assistance, it was a Hail Mary and the damn judge agreed. I didn't bother looking at Marisol when the judge made a decision. I didn't bother listening to her as I walked out the courthouse. I didn't care as I heard her cry. Her telling me that she only cheated one time and was faithful ever since. I just didn't care anymore. A few weeks later, my ex called me, shocked that I stopped payments on Luna's private schools and all of her activities. And I told her to call her baby daddy before hanging up. Even Luna called me. First time since this entire ordeal and she fucking calls me crying that she has to go to public school. That they were moving to the old neighborhood and how scary it was and how she wanted us to be a family again. I told her to go to her real father, the man who she truly wanted and ask him. I yelled at her, told her that not only she knew for years, but I read all the text messages, the back and forth from her own words that she was thankful that a hoodlum like me wasn't her father even though I haven't been a hoodlum since the day I found out that I was going to be a father. I hung up on her after that. I thought about ending it countless times, thought about ending my cousin, but I made him pay. He had to pay me a half a million dollars. A half a million that was all mine and not one cent belonged to my ex because she agreed on the lump sum. I didn't care that the money came from the church. I was hurting. I left New York shortly after and went to Idaho as furthest away as I could from New York as possible. I just picked a random state and city and just left. Opened up a new shop, got a house, but for two years I had trust issues. For two years I saw a therapist, anger management. I went to rage rooms. It was difficult until I found myself going back to church and ironically, that was where I met my fiance. Jocelyn is wonderful. She just turned 30 at the time and we just hit it off. I told her everything that happened to me. I explained to her that I'm going to have trust issues and she understood. A year later, she told me that I was going to be a dad and insisted that for me to have a DNA test, just so I can have peace of mind. I forgot what it felt like to be happy again. And when my son was born, I was overjoyed. I called my grandmother for the first time in years. She cried and when I told her about my son, she insisted that I come to New York so she can meet her great grandchild guilt tripping me by saying that she's 90 and would like to see me one more time and I agreed. We flew to New York, rented a car and drove to Bushwick. The one thing I disliked about the hood, you only need to see one person from your past and the whole fucking neighborhood knows that you're back. My grandmother saw my son, met my fiance, made an offshoot comment in Spanish about her being white and I just yes her to death. I was planning to spend the week, do the tourist thing for once. It was Jocelyn's first time in her life in the Big Apple and I wanted to make it special. Damn it, nothing works out as planned. First, my ex shouted my name from downstairs. I looked out the window and was surprised how fat she got. My grandmother told me in Spanish to talk to her and Jocelyn agreed. I went downstairs and was awkwardly silent for a minute and the anger just came back like a flood. Marisol told me that I looked good and said that she looked like shit. She told me that she missed me, that... She's never been with another man since the divorce and I ignored her. She even had the audacity to tell me that I'm a grandfather and I gave her a look. Apparently, Luna got with a decent guy and got knocked up at 18. Her baby daddy joined the Marines to support them and her father wanted nothing to do with her. He just pays child support and refuses to acknowledge her. He's no longer a pastor and is working at the Banco Popular two blocks over. And told me that Luna named the baby after me and I couldn't stand looking at her. Marisol wanted me to wait because Luna was on her way over and I just walked away. I went to my grandmother's house and I didn't have to tell Jocelyn anything. She just knew and we left. In the elevator, I told her what happened and she smiled and told me everything was going to be alright. The look on Marisol's face when we left the building. She was looking at my fiancé like she was the other woman and Jocelyn, without missing a beat, introduced my son to her. Well, she said, I would like you to meet his biological child. That was a knife twist but she knew my pain. Marisol kept trying to stop me from leaving, telling me that Luna felt bad about what she did and Jocelyn wanted me to make amends. But I was so angry, I hopped into the car, ignoring Marisol's pleas and Jocelyn told me to extend an olive branch. So I gave her my number, so Luna could call me and left. At the red light, I saw my cousin by the Cruci Frito stand and I don't know what came over me. I got out of the car, ran up to him and beat the shit out of him. 
Joslyn was screaming, telling me to stop when we locked eyes. I could see the fear. I spit on him and left. I'm back home, working, being a dad and a good fiancé to a beautiful woman. Yet since going back, when I'm alone with my thoughts, the anger comes back. Luna did text me with a picture of her smiling with her son, telling me that she was sorry for what she did. Yet I don't know if she's sorry that she missed me or if she's sorry because the man she wanted to be her father wasn't the man she thought he was. I'm confused and I'm scared to reach out to her. I want to get past this and I want to move on. My family was my everything. My daughter was my world. Even after these years, it still hurts. It still makes me angry, but I know I need to move on. But it's hard. I want to reach out to Luna, but I'm so scared. I have people telling me to let her back in, but all I could think about are those text messages and the lies. The constant lies. I need help and my usual methods are not working. Thank you for reading this. I needed to vent. Like I mentioned, I don't care if you think this is fake. I really don't give a rat's ass, but your help is appreciated. Opie comes in with an update and says, I'm waiting for the mods to approve this, but it's been a while and yesterday was Father's Day. Luna tried calling me several times and I looked at the phone. I wanted to answer. I didn't, but all that kept lingering in my mind was those messages. What she said to her mother, to her real father, her friends. So I ignored it. Eventually, I listened to her voicemail and she sounded so cheerful. She briefly apologized for her actions, but to me, it didn't sound sincere. Just passive. Maybe I'm overthinking it. She mentioned about her son, her fiancé, and asked me to call her. Simple request and I became infuriated. My grandmother and my fiancé are telling me to give her a chance, but when I asked my grandmother if Luna or Marisol ever asked about me in the four years I left, she said Marisol did constantly, but not Luna. So in my twisted mind, I think Luna wants me in her life so her child will be taken care of. Or maybe she wants to milk me and that made me so angry. Even Marisol tried calling me constantly and I'm already thinking about changing my number. I spent the majority of my father's day in the gym, hitting the heavy bag and have an appointment today with Anger Management Group. Maybe they can give me an outside opinion. If this ever gets published by the mods, I would like to get your opinion as well. In the meantime, I'm just figuring this out on my own. Next update. I would like to thank a user for his advice on sending an email as a start. I sent a small email to Luna that simply said, what do you want? Didn't expect the multi-paragraph response. She started the email profusely apologizing for how she acted. She said she found out I wasn't her father, she was angry. She confronted her mother and cried, making her promise not to tell me. Since she felt lost, she began to talk to my cousin, a real father more and more. He told her of my violent past, the things I used to do, things that I kept a secret from her. This made her angry, and the more they spent time together, the more she pulled away from me. She said she felt bad from time to time, but my cousin would reinforce her feelings towards me. The day of the quins, she said, while we were dancing, she realized how stupid she was acting. She realized how much I loved her, and then her messages appeared on screen. In the days that followed, she was told by my wife's side of the family to give me space, to not call me, and she listened. She said she was watching her family fall apart because of her and she couldn't do anything to fix it. She told me she understood why I did what I did, yet she wanted to reach out. Her grandfather kept telling her that I loved her, that I raised her, and despite what I saw through her messages, I will do the right thing and she believed him. During the divorce, her mother fell in a dark place, not talking to her, barely eating, and she was just existing. When she found out that my name was removed from her birth certificate, she said she had a panic attack. Her mother told her that they will have to move back to Brooklyn. And when she asked about her life in school, her mother told her, that was the life your father gave you, and he's not your father anymore. So she called me, begging, and I cursed her out and then hanged up. She cried for days. She tried to reach out to my cousin, who pretty much ignored her. She even went to church and he told her to leave, called her a mistake. Her mother refused to talk to her, basically locked herself in her room, only leaving to use the bathroom or take a shower. She begged her grandfather to take her to see me. And when they came to Long Island, she learned that I moved. The grandfather told her that he will talk to my grandmother and find out where I went. For the next two years, according to her, it was hell. The entire neighborhood knew what happened to her and her mother. Her father avoided her at all costs and tried not to pay child support. It took her grandfather to threaten him to start paying. In the meantime, her mother didn't talk to her. She was just locked in her room. The few times they did speak, she called her an ungrateful girl, 
and she was the reason that she lost the love of her life. Her grandfather had to put her mother in place by telling her that her infidelity was the reason she lost the love of her life and she locked herself back in her room. So Luna barely stayed home and that was how she met the father of her child. He worked in the corner bodega. They were the same age and after a few months of talking, one thing led to another and she ended up getting pregnant. Her grandfather was furious but when her boyfriend insisted that he would marry her, that cooled things down. Luna said her pregnancy was a blessing in disguise. Her mother began talking to her again and even began leaving the room to be by her side for every checkup. Being a senior in high school while pregnant was cliche, but she made it work. A month before the baby was born, she graduated and her boyfriend joined the Marines. He wanted to elope before leaving, but she wants a wedding. Her boyfriend had no issues naming his son after me. Apparently, his father was absent and the fact he was a junior was a reminder that he shared the name of a man who didn't want him. When she heard I was in town, she got a speeding ticket trying to get to my grandmother's apartment. She wanted to see me, wanted to apologize, wanted me to see her son. She just wanted to see me. However, she was late and she cried. When her mother gave her my number, she wanted to call me immediately, but the entire neighborhood was talking on how I beat her father up, so she waited. Her mother was sad to see that I had moved on and have a son. Luna was happy to know she had a little brother, but her mother became a little more depressed. I felt sorry for Marisol. After I read the email, I called Marisol and asked her if this was true, that she refused to talk to Luna for years and blaming her for our divorce. She confirmed it and at first I yelled at her, but I regained my composure when I heard her crying. I told her to move on, find someone else, but she said no. She told me that I was a husband and I will always be a husband. It broke my heart a little. I then had my grandmother go see my cousin so I could talk to him. The second he heard my voice, he began to cry and begged me to forgive him. I just asked him, why didn't he be a father to Luna? Well, he poisoned her against me. And he said it was envy. He was in love with Marisol and I took her from him. When I was arrested, he consoled her, manipulated her and barely lasted a second with her. And she realized what she was doing and shoved him off of her. But he already came. When she found out she was pregnant, he knew the baby was his. They both knew. It was supposed to be a secret. Marisol took her double hysterectomy as God's punishment for infidelity and deceit. When Luna turned 13, he was drunk. Seeing my life and envy was the one sin he couldn't shake. So he wanted to ruin it. And he did. I told him, when we see each other again in hell, I will be his eternal torturer and hung up on him. Jocelyn was there for me. She told me that everything will be okay. Luna and I commented through email. I spoke to her on the 4th. She spent over an hour crying while talking to me. I even spoke to her boyfriend who asked me permission to marry her. I thought it was funny, but honorable. My wedding is next month and Jocelyn wants me to invite Luna. At the same time, Luna wants me to give her away for her wedding in November. My future father-in-law sat me down and told me that he couldn't grasp my situation, but respects the road I took. Because the road saved his little girl gave him a handsome grandson and a future son-in-law that he would kill for. That made me laugh, but he told me that I need to let go of the anger and start forgiving, but never forget. He's right. So we gave Luna an invite to my wedding, even offered to pay for the plane ticket. Her boyfriend, or should I say, fiance, said that he will work it off at my garage when they arrive. I kind of like him. As for me giving her away, I don't know yet. Let's see how the wedding happens first. Thank you again for the advice and for the few DMs. No one was rude or disrespectful. You guys helped me so much. We'll update if something happens, but for now, I have to get things ready for my wedding next month. Opie then says, might be my final update. A lot has happened in such a short window. Again, I would like to thank the large number of support within the DMs. Of course, they were hate messages, but all I could say to those people, what would you have done and what I did are two different mindsets. And until you go through the same situation or something similar, don't tell me how I should have felt. Leading up to the wedding, I was already on eggshells. Jocelyn was the happiest I've ever seen. My in-laws were freaking due to the number of people that were coming. I swear, I think the whole town came. While all of this was happening, I was an hour and a half away in Boise, waiting for Luna and her family at the airport. In the days leading up to her visit, we spoke. A lot. Her mostly crying, apologizing, and me just listening. When she couldn't speak anymore, I was talking to her fiancé who was more down to earth. When their plane landed was so scared 
not for seeing her again, but I was afraid due to my anger. I was afraid that I would lose my temper. The second she saw me at the terminal, she ran to me, crying and for a split second, I saw my daughter when she was seven. It was weird, picturing a child in my mind. She ran screaming daddy and the second she hugged me, she began to cry loudly. It was like a wail that caused so many people to look at us. She just kept saying sorry over and over, asking me to forgive her. And I just held her for over 15 minutes. She refused to let me go. It took her fiance and I to convince her to do so. It was as if she felt the second she let go, I was going to vanish. After she composed herself, her fiance properly introduced himself and they introduced me to their child. I won't lie, I cried. I wasn't angry, but I cried holding this infant. Luna was also the spitting image of her mother when she was 19, which made me wonder about Marisol. During the drive home, we talked about her fiance's boot camp, how he's going to be a career man, and how Luna was going to college online to learn accounting, mostly catching up conversation. When we arrived at my house, Jocelyn and her family has a spread ready for them. Since we've been together, Jocelyn learned how to cook Spanish foods, but the week leading up to Luna's visit, she went a little overboard. Yet, I get it. She wanted to make an impression. Her and Luna just hit it off. Every few minutes, Luna would walk towards me just to give me a quick hug and go back to Jocelyn. I was just holding my son and my grandson. While Jocelyn was introducing Luna to her family, I put the babies to bed and I went to the porch for some fresh air. Luna's fiance was standing by foot of the yard, staring at all the bisons roaming around. For a moment, I wanted to give him the dad talk, but I felt that it wasn't my place. Instead, I asked him how he liked the view and he was awestruck. I know the feeling. Living in the city the majority of your life, wide open spaces, is a marvel to take in. After a minute or two, he looked at me and told me how regretful Luna was. I've been with your daughter for three years and not a day goes by when she mentioned how much she misses you and regrets what she did. Out of everything he told me, a single sentence constantly replays in my mind. A fiancé's name is Roberto. For a man who is only 19 years old, he acts and talks like a man in his 30s tells me he had a rough life to mature so quickly. I know the feeling. The following day, I had to go to the shop and Luna practically jumped into the car with the baby. Even Roberto told her it was okay and to enjoy herself. Luna looked like she was going to hyperventilate and I told her that we'll work a half day and I'll spend the rest of the day with her. That seemed to do it and I slowly began to realize how traumatized Luna was. During the drive, I asked Roberto how bad was she? She has severe abandonment issues, constantly afraid that he's going to leave her, despite him telling her that he will never. She calls him a lot, a bit clingy at times, and in the beginning, afraid to be herself in the fear that they will break up. He had to reaffirm his love for her, just so that she could let her guard down a little. This was my doing, I know that, but he doesn't blame me. He told me he completely understood why I did what I did. Allow me to say that Roberto is a terrible mechanic. He knows nothing about cars, so I had him clean up the shop so he could work off the plane tickets. We closed early and when we arrived, Luna practically ran towards me. She looked unhinged. I told her that I'll be back and she went to her fiancé when I walked into my house. Jocelyn told me that Luna needs to be reminded that everything is going to be fine, that I won't leave her again. I didn't know what to say, but Jocelyn grabbed my hands and told me that Luna is hurting and she needs her father. For the next couple of days, I spent all of my time with Luna, getting reacquainted with her. I took her to my in-law's ranch and showed her the bisons, the elk, and took her on a hike. Two days before the wedding, I apologized to her for leaving. I apologized for the way I acted, apologized for the actions I took. She didn't want to hear none of it. She told me that there's nothing I should apologize for. She said she knows she was the reason why it all fell apart that she knows it was her fault and I had to stop her. I began to cry. I told her it wasn't her fault. I was angry. I was hurting and despite what happened, I should be the one who should apologize. We both cried and just held each other. Luna appeared to be slightly better. On the day of my wedding, she was happy. In the last minute, Jocelyn made her into a bridesmaid and Roberto a groomsman. The wedding was beautiful. During the reception, I asked the DJ to play the song from Luna's Quince and I asked her to dance with me. She was crying the entire time, holding on to me for dear life as we danced. I haven't felt this happy in a long time. I let Luna and her fiancé stay in my house, taking care of her little brother while I went to Hawaii for my honeymoon. 
When we got home, she was happy. She hugged us and it felt great. Roberto told me that he's going to Camp Dwyer in Afghanistan and would like to know if Luna could stay near us. He would pay for an apartment near us until he could buy a house and of course I said yes. They went back to the city the day before yesterday. Like I said, it's been eventful. Luna's wedding is in November and Roberto is leaving in December. Roberto sent me what constitutes as a year's rent for a townhouse community three miles away from my house. However, Jocelyn suggests we should put a double wide on our property for Luna and let us save money to buy a house when Roberto comes back. Marisol has been blowing up my phone and based on the messages she left, she's not happy that Luna is moving. Right now, my focus is on family and to mend my relationship with my daughter. Opie then adds a comment which says, First, I would like to thank everyone for the positive feedback and support in the comments and DMs. Also, apologies for the delay in the update. I waited for Luna to come back from her honeymoon so I could show her this post. Our therapist wanted us to have full transparency when it comes to the situation. I wanted to make sure for me to share any more information since this is also about her. She read the post, but I refused to let her see any of the hateful comments considering how much she was crying from the post. Yet she had no issues with me posting an update. Then a tragedy happened with the passing of my grandmother and I had to place it on hold. So let's begin where I left off. Jocelyn and I managed to get a double wide on our property and had everything ready for Luna and Roberto. Many people wondered why Jocelyn kept pushing to make peace in the beginning. Jocelyn didn't want my lingering anger to affect my family and wanted to make peace with myself for our family's sake. I'm grateful for that. As I mentioned before, Maricel was constantly calling me and the day Luna left New York, I spoke to her. She was crying and angry with me, telling me that I took her child and grandchild from her. I tried to explain to her that I want to rebuild my relationship with Luna and almost immediately she began asking about me rebuilding my relationship with her. I had to tell her that I couldn't, which caused her to cry and she hung up on me. Luna and Roberto loved the trailer and the first thing Roberto did was starting the process to repay me. I told him that it wasn't needed, but he insisted and I appreciated it. A few days later, Luna and I had our first therapy session. I learned of all the anxiety medication she was taking. I learned that she suffered from chronic panic attacks. One thing I can share about our sessions is that Luna is very remorseful and she suffered from years of verbal abuse from Marisol. There were things that shocked me. Some things that I found to be unbelievable but was confirmed when I spoke to my former father-in-law. Marisol verbally and emotionally abused her. My cousin mentally destroyed her and despite what my feelings were and the actions I took, I know I hurt her too. Two weeks after they arrived, Roberto received news that he was being deployed sooner, so they had to move their wedding up. At first, Luna wanted to wait for him to come home, but Roberto insisted. He wanted them to be married before he left. Jocelyn and I offered to help pay for the wedding, but Luna told me she only wanted me to walk her down the aisle and give her away. I know people kept telling me to get a DNA test because there wasn't one from the court due to the circumstantial evidence that was provided. Allow me to tell you that there's no need for that. Luna is O positive, I'm AB negative, Marisol is B positive, and my cousin is O positive. However, despite what happened, Luna is my daughter. I only wished I wasn't blinded with rage. Anyway, the wedding had to be small since it was being done on my in-law's ranch. My former father-in-law, Roberta's mother, Marisol, and my grandmother was invited. Only two RSVP'd. My grandmother couldn't come because she wasn't feeling well, Marisol was admitted in hospital for trying to hurt herself. Luna didn't take the news well and I was angry at Marisol because she expected Luna to come back to New York to help take care of her. On the weeks leading to the wedding, I learned I was going to be a father again and I was ecstatic. Roberto learned the hard way about breaking a horse and I began teaching him how to fix cars. Again, I like this kid. The day before the wedding, my former father-in-law arrived with Roberto's mother. His mother is a very kind person and I commented her for raising a fine young man. My former father-in-law was stoic as always, but we spoke. He told me that he was disappointed that I left, but given the circumstances, he understood. He only wished that his daughter would move on as well. On the day of the wedding, Jocelyn was Luna's maid of honor. And I tried best not to cry as I walked her down, but it was difficult. It was even more difficult for her. During the reception, we played the Quint song again for our father-daughter dance and again, she just held on to me. For those who wanted to know the song, it's Cinderella by Stephen Curtis Chapman. During the honeymoon, things were getting back to normal. I was planning to write an update, but a few before they came home, 
my grandmother passed. This hurt me because she wasn't just my grandmother, but my mother. As I mentioned, I never knew my parents. Both my mother and father passed away alongside my cousin's parents when I was a few months old from a car accident and she raised us together. So while preparing to go to New York for the funeral, I was trying to hold myself and prepare to see my cousin. We went as a family to New York. My grandmother was laid to rest in Cypress Hill Cemetery. Yet during the funeral, with my wife, daughter and son-in-law beside me, I wasn't angry. I didn't bother acknowledging my cousin during the funeral and as we left. My cousin kept trying to talk to me, practically begging for me to yell at him, to hit him and for some reason, me ignoring him just hurt him even more. A few days before we went back to Idaho, Luna and I visited Marisol in Bellevue. She was excited to see us, sad that she missed the wedding and we thought everything was fine until we had to leave. She began to cry, telling the orderly that she wanted to go home with her husband, begging me to take her home, that I was the love of her life and to please just take her home. And I just cried as they took her away. Luna broke down as well, as it took a while before either of us had the strength to leave the visitor's lounge. My former father-in-law told us that Marisol was never the same after the divorce. She still celebrated my birthday and our anniversary, and he would argue with her to move forward, but she never did. He said she isolated herself and she was verbally abusive towards Luna for a long time. Luna's pregnancy just took her out of the trance. He said that the 13 months of being nice to our daughter doesn't take away from the four years of negligence and abuse she has done to her. He hopes the hospital will help her. Jocelyn told me, that I will have to forgive her so she can forgive herself. Right now, as I'm typing, things are okay. Jocelyn and I are as thick as thieves. Roberto left to Saudi Arabia last week and Luna is trying to appear strong with him gone, but she's doing it poorly. She's been clinging on to me and Jocelyn. I thought Jocelyn might be bothered, but she's been loving spending time with her. She's indeed a wonderful woman. She's been taking Luna all across the town, introducing her as her daughter. I thought it might bother Luna, but she was very happy about it. I forgave Marisol and I hoped she could find the strength to move on. Then Opie comes in a year later and says, Before I begin, I want to thank all of you, even the haters and the doubters. When I posted a year ago, I was in a dark place. I was always angry, lost, depressed. The people here really helped me and the gratitude that I have for all of you will always be with me until the day I die. This community helped me get my daughter back. All of you helped me get my life back. The past year has been great, but not without its ups and downs. I have another son and Jocelyn wants to try for another one. I'm going to have another grandchild. Luna is two months pregnant and my son-in-law has applied for officer training school. I'm hoping he gets in. My daughter has been getting a little better since the therapist started in a prolonged exposure. For a while, her panic attacks went from mild to severe and thanks to a user for suggesting exposure therapy because it has been a blessing. Our therapy sessions together were hard in the beginning, listening to everything she went through. She owned up to her mistakes and I owned up to mine. My in-laws have her working on the ranch. Nothing fancy, feeding horses, putting out hay, and my mother-in-law has been teaching her on herding bison. It makes me smile when I see her on a horse. Her face lights up. She and Jocelyn act like mother and daughter, seeing how Jocelyn is overprotective of her is adorable. I'm blessed to marry such a wonderful woman. When I met her, she had just come out of a very abusive relationship. She had a swollen eye and bruises around her throat, and I volunteered to fix her father's three tractors for free, since they were damaged due to the ex pouring salt and sugar in the tanks. At first, I mind my business, but as she brought me food, we talked and got to know one another, and a month later, we had our first kiss. It was great took her out to dinner and a few days later her ex came to see me and tried to scare me off. I put the fear of God into him. Sorry, I went off topic there. In the first week of May, my ex-father-in-law passed away and I was afraid that Luna would relapse, but she was strong thanks to Roberto being there with her. That man had a strong impact on her life and the level of gratitude that I owe him will never be repaid. We all flew to New York and he had his viewing like a true Boricua. He had a live salsa band, an open bar, and a buffet with pasteles, pernil, sancocho. All of his favorite foods were there for all to chow down. Do not mourn me, celebrate me. That was the banner over his casket that was draped with a Puerto Rican flag. He was wearing his vanilla ice cream suit. I couldn't help but smile the entire time. Marisol was there, but she was just staring into nothing. It was like her brain shot off, only to turn back on when Luna or I sat next to her and she began talking about preparing for the quince. 
After a while, she realized where she is and her brain shuts off again. A therapist told us during the second day of the viewing that her mind is stuck in a moment where she is at her happiest. When Luna walked away, the therapist told me that in her professional opinion, she believed my cousin may have raped Marisol and her mind protected her from that trauma, rationalized it and made her believe it was a moment of weakness. That messed me up and I told Jocelyn what the therapist said and she was shocked. She insisted that I should tell Luna, but I was afraid to. She made so many steps to get better. I didn't want her to revert back. Instead, we told Roberto first, who wanted to go and find my cousin. But I talked him down and then we sat as a family and spoke to Luna. It was a bad night, a really bad night. We had an incident at the burial two days later. My cousin showed up uninvited and caused a scene. He was drunk and I wanted to end him. I believe is the proper term. Instead, I told him to leave. Roberto was holding me back and my cousin began shouting that he was always better than me and always will be. And it was because of him and his daughter that I made my life better. So in a way, he's responsible for me bettering myself. I got angry and I practically lifted Roberto off the ground to get him. But Luna punched him in the mouth and began pummeling him. She was screaming and crying. She was so angry while attacking him. I briefly hesitated and Roberto pulled her off of him. As he was getting up, Jocelyn punched him and knocked him out, breaking her index finger in the process. Before we went back home, we had a family meeting and we all agreed that we will transfer Marisol into a mental facility near us since she has no one else. We are going to go to therapy and with this new realization, my daughter is trying to cope with the fact that she might be a product of rape. Before this happened, I was planning to adopt her since legally she's no longer my daughter. I want to make it official again but I feel like the timing might not be right. I will answer any questions. I own this community a lot. God bless you all. Whoa, and what an absolute roller coaster that one was. That just kept going on and on. But that was OP's last update on that particular post. And I apologize for my pronunciations on Spanish words and names in that. I'm pretty sure I butchered a lot of them. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. It's been a long one, so if you made it to the end, thank you so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.